Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. If you're finding these videos helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Today we've got another game theory struggle for you. We're talking about repeated games. We're going to talk about both finitely repeated games and infinitely repeated games. Doing so, we're going to talk about a like extensive form version where it's not really extensive form, but we're still trying to have a flow chart idea of what's happening in the game. So we're going to talk about something called a stage game. We're also going to talk about something called the time discount factor or the stochastic discount factor. And then we are going to use the prisoner's dilemma, both finitely repeated and infinitely repeated, to talk about how you can think about whether or not a strategy is a Nash equilibrium of an infinitely repeated game. So let's go ahead and get into it. Timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around. But let's start off by revisiting the prisoner's dilemma, which we saw in the pure strategy Nash equilibrium video. And we've got Bonnie and Clyde, and here are the payoffs. We know that the Nash equilibrium, when we play this game once, is defect, defect. And we saw that those are dominant strategies. So let's say that I want to play the prisoner's dilemma twice in a row. How do I write that in sort of an extensive form way that's not an extensive form way? Well, we've got PD1, where this is the game. This is not a choice node. This is the prisoner's dilemma round one. There are four possibilities that come out of the first round of the prisoner's dilemma. We could have played cooperate, cooperate. We could have played one cooperates and one defects. We could have the other person defects and the other person cooperates, or we could have that Nash equilibrium of defect defect. Now, this is going to lead in to Prisoner's Dilemma 2, but I'm going to write them all in different colors. And the reason I'm going to write them all in different colors is because even though each of these is the second round of the Prisoner's Dilemma, they are not the same. What in the world does that mean? Remember that we are trying to keep track of payoffs as we go through this game. And if we are keeping track of payoffs, then the total payoff from a two round prisoner's dilemma depends on both the first round of prisoner's dilemma and the second round of prisoner's dilemma. So the second round of prisoner's dilemma that came from cooperate, cooperate, has a fundamentally different payoffs than the payoffs for the second round of Prisoner's Dilemma where the first round was defect, defect. So what we get out of this is that a stage game is not equal to a sub game. What is a stage game? A stage game is just this Prisoner's Dilemma 1 and this Prisoner's Dilemma 2. They're rounds of the overall game but they are not a sub game because this is not a perfect sub game. You really have to go all the way back to the first game. So now let's talk about the stochastic discount rate or the time discount rate that I talked about. This is going to be important, not just for this game theory, but will also be important later in macro as well as micro problems. So let's do a real basic example of the stochastic or the time discount factor to hopefully make it more concrete. All this is gonna say, all I'm trying to say here is that something that I'm going to get in the future is not worth as much to me as if I were going to get it today. So let's say that today I went to Chipotle for dinner. So this is one Chipotle today. This is not equal to one Chipotle tomorrow. If you tell me that I am going to Chipotle tomorrow, I'm gonna to say, ah, that sounds great. But if you tell me that we're going to Chipotle today or even in a couple of minutes, that is going to make me much happier. Alternatively, you can think of it as if you were to tell me that I'm gonna win $1,000 in 20 years, that money is not going to really make a difference into how I feel today. It's not going to make nearly as much of a difference as if you hand me a $100 bill right here and now. So generally, we can just assume something. So let's say for me that one 
Chipotle tomorrow. This is just, again, my preferences is equal to about 0 0.97 Chipotle's today. Or one Chipotle today is worth more than one Chipotle tomorrow. What do we call this 0 0.97? Well, it's called lots of things, but we're going to call this beta. So this 0 0.97, we're going to call beta. Beta has to be less than one because we're discounting the future and it has to be greater than zero because tomorrow still means something. Why does this matter? Why am I pausing to talk about this? Well, when we play the two rounds of the prisoner's dilemma, this second round, the payoffs of this second round aren't worth as much as the first round because the second round is in the future. So we're gonna discount the payoffs of the second round. So if I think about this round one versus round two, so suppose that we play the prisoner's dilemma the first time and we get the defect defect and we play prisoner's dilemma the second time and we get cooperate defect. Let's think about the payoffs. So the payoff to Bonnie is going to be equal to one from the first round because in the prisoner's dilemma, they defect, they both get one. And then it's going to be beta because it's discounted times four. And then the payoff to Clyde is going to be equal to one plus beta times zero. So this is the payoffs discounted by their stochastic or their time discount factor. Now, when we're thinking about a finite repeated game, the question here is, well, could Clyde, who's playing cooperate in the second round, could he do better by playing defect both times? And the answer unsurprisingly is yes, because if he played defect instead, maybe I'll do this in red, if he played defect instead, then the payoff to Clyde would be equal to one plus beta times one, which is better than one plus zero, which is what he's currently getting. So you can imagine that it is always going to be better to play defect defect in any finite number of rounds of the prisoner's dilemma. Another way to think of it is you can think that promises or threats are not credible in the finite version of the prisoner's dilemma. Because if Bonnie says something like, all right, well, if you cooperate with me today, I promise that I will cooperate with you in the second round. And then Clyde says, okay, fine. But in the second round, Bonnie says, psych, I played defect because it's always better for me. You're a sucker. And now the game is over so that there is no way for you to get back at me for going back on my promise. And that's always going to be true in a finite number of rounds because there's always going to be a last game at which someone can neglect their promise or not follow through on a threat. So that is why that is not credible. Now, when we go to infinite games, it becomes a little different. Now, infinite games, the way you are going to think about this most often, based on the way it's tested, is you can come up with a lot of different Nash equilibrium for an infinitely repeated game. So most commonly, you are going to be given a strategy and asked whether or not it is a Nash equilibrium. So let's do one of those examples now. Here's a strategy. I think the strategy is pretty fun. This is called the Grim trigger strategy. We're still in the prisoner's dilemma. Now, the Grim trigger strategy goes like this. So part one, I play cooperate. Part two, if you defect, I defect literally forever, forever and ever and ever. I will play defect on you no matter what you do, no matter how much you beg me to play cooperate. Instead, I am going to play defect forever and ever, and I will never forgive you for playing defect on me. Otherwise, if you play cooperate, like I really hope you do, otherwise I'm gonna punish you forever, then next round, we return to step one. And we go on and on. And so the question is, is this a Nash equilibrium? Well, let's, let's find out. So if I'm a player, 
How, what does my payoff look like if I play cooperate, given that you're playing the grim strategy? Well, that means that I'm going to get three every time. So three, three beta, three beta times beta, plus three beta squared times beta, on and on and on. So this is really just the sum from t equals zero to infinity of three beta to the t. Now this is a very common math trick we use in econ. This is a geometric series because beta is less than one. So this sum is three over one minus beta. If you are not super clear on how I did that, I would highly encourage you to refresh on that geometric series sum because we're gonna use it a lot. Now, what happens if instead I play defect? So defect playing Grimm. Well, I get four because my partner cooperated and I defected, so I get four, but then my partner is going to play defect forever and ever and ever. And so my best hope is also to play defect forever and ever and ever. And so I'm gonna get one times beta plus one beta times beta plus one beta squared times beta plus dot, 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 which is four plus the sum from t equals zero to infinity of beta to the t, which is just four plus one over one minus beta. So now the question is, is it really the case that this is bigger? So let's compare three over one minus beta to four plus one over one minus beta we can see that this means that three is greater than or equal to five minus four beta, which means four beta is greater than or equal to two, which means the way that this works, the way that cooperating is worth it over defecting is if beta equals one half. And remember that we said earlier that for me, my beta was about 0 0.97, which is pretty common. And so my beta is definitely more than one half. So I definitely am playing the Grim trigger strategy. Definitely a best response for me to the Grim strategy is to also play the Grim strategy. So this is a Nash equilibrium checkbox and we are done. So hopefully this helps with repeated games in terms of making more sense and testing whether or not something is a Nash equilibrium in an infinitely repeated game. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.